So a while ago I made a video talking all about Sony's different ECM microphones, which are microphones that just connect right into the hot shoe of certain Sony cameras, no cables required. Now a lot has changed since I posted that video. There are a lot of other great, more affordable, more versatile options on the market that we're gonna talk about today. So this is almost like a prequel, sequel, I don't know what you'd call it. This is like a part two. We're gonna talk about some of those ECM microphones, the ones that I have, as well as some other options. So let's go through all of the microphones that I currently own for filming videos here on YouTube. We have the trusty Rode Video Micro 2. This is the second generation. We've got the Rode Video Mic NTG, a great microphone, my most recent purchase. Purchase. We've got the Sony ECM B1M. This was my favorite microphone. This is what made me fall in love with microphones. We've got its smaller sibling, the Sony ECM B10. This is just the same thing, a little smaller. We've also got a wild card, this Sennheiser XS Lav mic. You could see it plugs into USB C, so I brought this primarily to use with my phone. And finally, we have the DJI Mic 2. I have it wired up through my shirt. I'm using DJI's own Lav mic, and I had the receiver and a cable plugged into my camera. This is where all of that stuff lives. This is a nice AirPods style charging case, if you would. But first, let's start out with the DJI Mic 2. Now, as I just mentioned, this is the microphone you've been hearing since the start of this video. I think it sounds pretty decent. And when compared to the other microphones, it's very unique in that it is a wireless microphone. So what that means is, whether I stand all the way over here, over here, up close and personal with the camera, or change my distance while talking or while recording audio like I'm demonstrating right now, moving closer and further away from the camera. It sounds exactly the same. And this is the best thing about any wireless microphone, not just this wireless microphone. It just keeps the sound nice and consistent. Whereas previously, I might have started a video just being about arm's length from the camera, but then I may go back here to show my entire outfit. Maybe I would talk about my bike, or I would actually walk up back and forth between the camera. What would happen with the other microphones is I'd have to go in post and I'd have to actually go ahead and raise the volume or lower the volume and then it would just pick up echo inside of this room. So that's one thing that's really nice about any wireless microphone, not just the DJI Mic 2 in particular. Now I am currently using it with the lavalier microphone like I showed you. This lav I got recently just last week. I think it makes it sound just a little bit better. But here it is if I used it without the lav microphone right by my face. And here it is just mounted on the outside of my shirt. Here it is mounted on the inside of my shirt. So you could see, depending on where you mount it, how far or close it is to your mouth, it does sound better or worse. I always used to leave this one on the inside of my shirt. I think the lab mic is definitely nice. It sounds the best. Also, while I have it on the inside of my shirt with the receiver nice up close, this is how it sounds just flat with no audio correction at all. What I'd like to do is go into Final Cut Pro and turn on something called the loudness filter. You're actually listening to that right now. So it sounds a little bit better. And what I did a little while ago is I actually went in and changed some frequencies, made my own preset, and I just called the DJI Mic 2 in Final Cut Pro. I will turn that on right now. You can see how you'd actually play with the frequencies of this microphone and get it to sound a lot better in post. But I find if you use a lavalier mic with this particular microphone, you're not going to have to spend as much time figuring out how to edit that audio. You can just plug it in and use it either flat, like you're listening to right now, or if you're using Final Cut Pro like me, you could just go ahead and turn on that loudness preset that it comes with and you are Good to go. All right, good old pro and cons list with this mic. Well, number one, it being wireless. If you do a lot of content where you're moving around, walking around, changing distance from the camera, this mic is going to speed up your workflow. It's not going to pick up as much echo in a room like this, which is not sound treated. If you're filming in a room that's not sound treated like I am, you're also not going to have to go into post and raise or lower the volume or figure out how to get rid of that ambient noise. This microphone is really good at isolating your voice or isolating your subject's voice, whether you're filming both indoors or outdoors. Now this microphone also works with any device. That receiver that's on top of the camera comes with these little USB-C connectors that plugs right into your iPhone 15 Pro or later, your Android phone or any of your USB-C devices. And not to mention if you're using DJI's own products like their Pocket 3, which is very popular, or their Action 4 or the newly released Action 5, the best action cameras you can get, this microphone will connect right up 
via Bluetooth, so you don't even need to worry about connecting the receiver and that cable. It also has an internal recording. When I turn these on, I actually have it programmed to go ahead and internally record like that. That way, in case something happens to the connection with the camera, it's recording straight onto the actual what are these transmitters? I think, yeah, the straight onto the transmitters. So you do have a dual recording audio backup, which is definitely good if you're someone like me that's always concerned with redundancy. Now, cons of this product. Well, number one is going to be the price at $350 for the entire kit with the two transmitters and one receiver and all the goodies. You're looking at $350. And that does not even include the lab mic that I'm using and I would highly recommend since using it. These things are $40 each. So if you want to have a full kit and have both the transmitters with lab mics, you're looking at $350 plus $80, which is going to get you to $430, which is pretty eye-watering for most people. This mic does not sound good out of the box. You have to make sure your low pass filter, your low cut filter is set to off. For some reason, they have it set on. I would not use the noise cancellation. I prefer to do all that stuff in Final Cut Pro in post. It just sounds a lot better to me, so I wouldn't go anywhere near that. But you are going to have to set time aside to learn how to edit the audio if you want to make it sound anywhere as good as some of the shotgun mics we're going to talk about. So. Is it a big deal once you learn how to do it? No, or if you're satisfied with the flat audio, which I'm not, if you're using Final Cut Pro and you wanna just throw on the loudness filter like I opted to do for this video, sure, it's not that big of a deal, but it is still a pretty big hurdle. Most people, when you tell them to edit audio, they're like, I don't know what's going on. At least that's how it was for me. Next up, we're gonna talk about this guy, the Sony ECM B1M. Now you're actually listening to the Sony ECM B1M. I just connected it up right now. I will be holding the ECM B10, which is very similar. I'll just be using this as a prop. So ECM B1M is just a bit bigger than this. This is the microphone that I absolutely fell in love with. As you can see, it sounds amazing right out of the box. This is just the microphone plugged straight into the camera. This is the flat profile. Of course, I like to go ahead and Turn on the loudest filter, just makes the sound a bit better. But this microphone sounds absolutely amazing. And the lack of cables really make this a joy to use. When I was making daily content, this is the microphone that I used and it was just awesome to have such a simple, amazing microphone that I could rely on every single day. Pros of this microphone, it sounds good right out of the box. Yes, making a little click of just putting on the loudness filter is something that I like to do. But again, here is the flat, just regular straight out of box audio, raw audio, if you would. You could see it still sounds really, really good for a shotgun microphone. Back to the loudness filter, just because I like that, but it sounds awesome. Also, no cables necessary. Check this out. This is the ECM B10, basically same microphone, just cheaper and smaller. It has that hot shoe attachment right there. So all you've got to do is just take the hot shoe in any Sony microphone or any new Sony microphones connect it up, boom, there you go. You don't have to mess with having a cable right there. And as you can see on this camera, I use the strap a lot so the cable would get in the way of the shoulder straps. Since I actually do use shoulder straps for my cameras. There are also no batteries to worry about. The DJI Mic 2, these things, they all have their own batteries. Yes, they last a long time, but it's just something else you're going to have to worry about charging. And over time, the batteries will degrade. And a lot of these smaller microphones, smaller devices, they don't have replaceable batteries. So once the battery degrades, the device is pretty much kaput. You got to go ahead and spend a whole lot of money and jump through hoops to have your battery replaced or just fork over more money just to replace the whole thing. Cons of this microphone. Number one is going to be price. $350 for the Sony ECM B1M. Again, this is the ECM B10, very similar. That is a lot of money for this microphone, which really can only do one thing. Now, this microphone is exactly the same price as the DJI Mic 2 wireless kit, which comes with the two transmitters, one receiver, and everything you need to get up and get going. But it can't do nearly as much as a DJI Mic 2 wireless system since it doesn't work with older Sony cameras. Like if you've got an older Sony ZV-1 like I had at one point, it doesn't work. It only works with some of Sony's latest mirrorless cameras such as the A7S III that I'm using or the Sony ZV-E1. So unless you've got a nicer, more expensive Sony full-frame or APS-C 
crop mode mirrorless camera, this microphone doesn't work. You're very limited. Not only is it limiting in that factor, you can't mount these microphones closer on a stand. You can't put it on a boom pole and get it closer to your mouth. So if you're all the way to the other side of the room, that's it. The camera's stuck on top of the microphone. You can't, there's no way to get it closer. Well, maybe you can get like a little cable that co relocates the hot shoe, but I don't know how long those are. And last I checked, those are pretty expensive. I'm talking another $200. Not worth it in my opinion. At that case, just go with a cable, a regular standard wired microphone. But those two things make this microphone seriously limited. And they are basically just takes all the versatility out of them. And of course, with the ECM B1M, we do have to talk about the shock mount. The shock mount. It's internal. It bounces around. I haven't had much of an issue as far as actually walking around. If you're running, of course, you're gonna be hearing noise from the shock mount, but why would you be running and filming? I don't know, you should be using an action camera, different, different tool for a totally different job. But just the fact that it's very flimsy, the shock mount is flimsy. Literally, if I push the microphone to the right, it's gonna lean to the right. If I push it to the left, I lean it, it leans to the left. It just does not feel very refined on the ECMB1. And there's not a whole lot that you can do to fix that. I've just been living with it. It's not that big of a deal, but every time I look at the microphone or I see it flopping around, getting all like, you know, all weird, I just think it's not refined, especially for the price that you're paying for this microphone. And now it's time to do a good old fashioned distance sound test with the ECMB1M. Got my trusty, what is this called? Measuring tape? I forget words sometimes. So this is arm's length. I'm about two feet away, two feet away from the microphone right now. If I were vlogging with this microphone, this is arm's length. It probably sounds totally fine here. Two feet away, ECMB1M, how does it sound? And now I am five feet away, it might not look like it, but I just zoomed in from 24 to 35 millimeters. Sony ECM B1M microphone, five feet away. How does this one sound? I think I'm shouting the further away I get from a microphone. I'm, I'm trying not to shout just so that you can get an actual good idea of how the microphones sound. Five feet away, how does it sound? 10 feet away exactly from here. This is the Sony ECM B1M and this is how it sounds. Up next, we got the Sony ECM B10. Now, since getting this microphone, I use it a whole lot more than my Sony ECM B1M. Pros, it shares a lot of the same pros as the ECM B1M, meaning it connects right up to the hot shoe. It's got the hot shoe connector, no cables required, sounds really good without any editing at all. This is the flat profile. I just took the EQ off, but again, I like the loudness filter on all the microphones. It just sounds a lot better. So if you're using Final Cut Pro, I would highly recommend play around. They've got bass, they've got voice enhanced. They, they have a couple of built-in filters and you're probably gonna find one that you like. Loudness filter for me is my favorite. Now, it being the smaller version of the ECM B1M means a couple of different things. It doesn't take up as much space in your bag. It's a little bit more discreet, not much, but a little bit, a little bit lighter. But the main thing is that shock mount. It's not all loosey goosey like this. It's not all doing whatever it wants to do. It just feels a lot more refined. And if you're actually doing a lot of handheld filming, like I do, I actually like filming handheld. It's just more casual, keeps things more loose. This is definitely a better feeling microphone, just feels a lot more refined. And at list price of $250 versus the $350 for this microphone, I can honestly say that the ECM B10, the B10, is the better value microphone. Since you can hear, you let me know if you can hear the difference, you're getting about 90% the same sound as the B1M. Now, if you shop around, you could probably find it for around $200. I think I paid around $210 for it on Amazon. I bought this one used and it's been absolutely great. Now the ECM B10 does share a lot of the same disadvantages that the B1M has. A couple of those being you can only mount it on top of the camera. So if you're at the other side of the room, that's it. You, you can't mount it closer unless you want to try to get an expensive hot shoe locator cable, which at that point just go with a cheaper microphone altogether. And you can only use it with Sony's latest and greatest microphones. You can't use it if you have an old RX100 or even, even the old Sony ZV-1. Just like this one, 
you can't use it. Now the audio is good, but if you really listen, you really pay attention to it, it does sound a little bit more tin can like, it has like a tinny sound to it when compared to the B1M. The B1M has a bit more bass, it just sounds more full. The B10 just does sound a bit more tinny, makes it a bit cheaper sounding. But unless you listen to a clip of the B10 and the clip of the B1M back to back, even if you do that, you're gonna have to have headphones on, you're gonna have to really be paying attention. If you filmed an entire video with the B10, it would sound great. If you filmed an entire video with the B1M, it would sound great. You wouldn't know the difference unless you listened to it back to back a couple times. And although it is quite a bit cheaper than the B1M, especially if you get a used model, it still is a bit pricey for a microphone that only works with certain Sony cameras and can only sit in the hot shoe on top of the camera, that's it. All right, sound test for the ECM B10, which is mounted on top of the camera. Arms length array, uh, arms length away, two feet away, arms length. Again, vlog style, this is fully extended. I would really probably be a bit closer and using a wider lens. Two feet away, ECM B10, how does it sound? Sony ECM B10 or ECM B10, five feet away, how does this sound? And Sony ECM B10 or ECM B10, from 10 feet away, how does this sound? Up next, the Rode Video Mic NTG. This mic is absolutely awesome. I've been using it, I got it about a month ago, been using it a lot, and I really enjoy using it. All right, you're hearing the Rode Video Mic NTG on top. Again, this is what it sounds like in the flat profile. This is what it sounds like with the loudness filter on. I prefer the loudness filter. That's just me, if you're in Final Cut Pro. Pros. This mic, without a doubt, sounds the best out of any microphones on the list in this video today. It doesn't pick up as much echoes as these ECM microphones do, even in an untreated room, untreated, unsound treated room like we're in right now. And it just sounds nice, deep. It gives a good bass. It sounds nice and full. This microphone absolutely sounds the best. And since this microphone actually works off of a cable, that means that you can Use it with any camera you want. You could use it with an old Sony ZV-1. You could use it with a Canon. You could use it with a Nikon, just like the DJI Mic 2. When you've got that cable connection, yeah, there are some cons with the cable connection. You gotta remember to plug it up. But when you got that cable connection, it means as long as your camera has an audio jack, you're good. You can use this microphone and get amazing sound out of your cheaper 2015 RX100, whichever one they made, that, you know, whichever one they made that comes with the audio board. I don't really know the models that well because I wasn't really into cameras back then. Now on top of that, there's actually a USB-C port in this microphone, which allows you to use it with any USB-C device, such as your iPhone 15 or 16, or even your Android device, which thankfully now all phones are coming with USB-C, which if you ask me, Apple should have ditched lightning a long time ago. But you can also connect it up to your DJI Pocket 3, your DJI Osmo Action 4 or Action 5, and I've even used this to record some screen recordings off of my MacBook Pro. Just get a long USB-C cable, connect it right up, boom, you're good to go. And not to mention the price of this microphone is exactly the same as the ECM B10, not the B1M, the B10, does make the video mic NTG a great value since it is super versatile and it sounds so good. But of course, nothing is sunshine and rainbows all the time. There are a couple of cons with this beautiful microphone. First con is going to be it requires a battery to operate. Now it does have an internal microphone and battery life I believe is about 30 hours. So it is gonna be something extra you're going to have to manage or remember to charge. I don't have an issue with charging my devices. I have a little USB-C station on my desk which is right over there. And I usually keep this one right on, right on the side of my desk and I do a boom pole. So every time I think about it, I connect it up, let it sit on the charger, boom, I'm good to go. If you're someone that constantly is losing battery on your headphones, on your phone, you have a hard time charging things, this microphone is probably going to bite you since the battery does last so long, you're probably gonna forget that it actually has a battery in the first place. And before you know it, you're gonna need it. And all of a sudden it's gonna be totally dead. And you're gonna say, oh man, I wish I charged it. This microphone's also the biggest, heaviest microphone on the list. So it's not great for running and gunning. If you're out there and you're vlogging with your full frame camera, which, there's so many better options for nowadays anyway, but if you're one of the old school people, you like vlogging with a big heavy camera to get that awesome image quality, maybe get some awesome low light performance out of your cameras, this thing's gonna be a lot heavier than the other options we talked about so far, like the ECM mics or the DJI Mic 2. 
Now price I said was 250, I found this as a kit for 280 on Amazon. And the reason why the price was inflated is because it does not come with all of the windscreens required. You're gonna have to purchase the sponge windscreen separately and then you're gonna have to purchase that big fluffy windscreen, which when you're out in the actual wind, you're gonna have to purchase that separately as well, which is going to inflate the price closer to $300. Is that a huge deal? No, 250 to 300, you're still getting a great microphone. Just the fact that Rode doesn't give you everything you need in the box and you have to go out and buy more accessories is definitely a con. Of course, it does rely on a cable connection. There are a lot of pros to a cable connection. We mentioned you can use it with any camera, you can boom it closer to your mouth, but you do wanna make sure that you have the cable connected on both sides. Otherwise, you're screwed. You're not gonna catch any audio. Your camera is just gonna be picking up the regular internal audio, which most likely isn't very good. And finally, you do have to set the audio levels manually on this one, both in the camera and on the microphone itself. There's a little dial on the back of the microphone. You definitely wanna make sure that you set that properly. When I first got this microphone, I was playing around with it, and I accidentally set the audio too high on the actual knob on the microphone and found that it just, the sound was all distorted, and I tried to lower it five decibels in post, couldn't do it. So definitely just be careful. Make sure you practice setting your audio levels properly. Remember, set it in camera, but you also gotta set it on the microphone itself, which does theoretically give you more control, but just something else you gotta think about. All right, Rode Video Mic NTG. Two feet away, vlog test right here. If you would vlog with this big thing on top of your camera, so I'm sure someone's done it, sounds great. Two feet away, video mic NTG, how does this sound? Road video mic NTG, five feet away, how does this sound? Road video mic NTG, 10 feet away, how does this sound? But check it out, even though we did the distance test, you can get a boom pole like this. I just got this one on Amazon for 20 or 30 bucks. You can get a long cable like this and you could basically put the microphone right up here. I don't do this a lot. I'm pretty satisfied with just having the microphone on top of the camera, but this is definitely something a lot of creators like doing, and it's definitely an option with this microphone since you are relying on wires, and it is going to sound a lot better than that DJI Wireless Mic 2 or the DJI Mic 2 wireless system we talked about earlier in the video. Up next, the Rode Video Micro 2. This is the most affordable microphone on this list and in this video, and this was my second ever microphone that I ever purchased. Pros of this microphone. Well, the first pro is it's $80. It is literally a fraction of any other microphones you've seen or heard and or heard on in this video, on this video, in this video. ECM B1M, $200. You can buy two of the Rode Video Micro 2s. The Rode Video Mic NTG, 250. You can buy eight, 16, 24, you can buy three of them. Same thing with the DJI Mic 2, 350 divided by eight, you can buy four Rode Video Micro 2s for the DJI Mic 2. So by far, this is the most affordable, budget-friendly microphone on this list. And for that $80, it actually sounds pretty good. I've been using it with the loudness filter just mounted on top of the camera since we started talking about it. Here it is, just flat audio. You could see it sounds, eh, it sounds okay with the flat audio. Again, with the loudness filter switched on, it does make it sound a lot better. And with these more budget microphones, having that loudness filter becomes a lot more of a requirement. Whereas with the more expensive microphones, the B1M and the, and the Rode NTG, they sound pretty good right out of the gate, just flat, flat audio profile. But one simple click of the button, boom, loudness filter on, sounds pretty good. This is also the smallest and most lightweight microphone that we're talking about here today. These are pretty small and lightweight, the ECM B10 being the smallest, the Rode Video Micro 2 is even smaller than that, and forget about this thing is a tank, this thing is big and heavy. Sounds great, but big, heavy, and very expensive. So the Rode Video Micro 2 is the smallest and the lightest weight option we're talking about. Now what that means is it's going to be a great microphone just to throw in your camera bag. It's not really gonna take up any space, and you're probably not going to be able to feel that extra weight since it is so lightweight. And of course, the cable connection does mean that you can boom it closer to you, something that you can't do with the ECM microphones. And since it is so much cheaper than the ECM microphones, just means it's a lot better of a value since it does retain that versatility of that cable connection. 
And of course, that also means you could use it with any camera that has an audio jack, not just the high-end A7S III, FX3, A7IV, ZBE one FX30 type Sony mirrorless microphone, Sony mirrorless cameras. Cons of this microphone. The cons are tricky because almost every single con gets canceled out because the price is so good. First con is the sound could be better. Yes, it is the worst sounding microphone on this list, but if you put on the loudness filter, it does sound more than more than decent. It sounds pretty good, like 80, 80 out of 100 I give this microphone, so that's good. And while that cable connection does have a lot of pros and makes the microphone more versatile than one of the hot shoe microphones, the ECMs from Sony, it does mean that if you're out there vlogging, it's one extra thing you're gonna have to remember to plug in. And you've also gotta be really careful since if you're using that shoulder strap, that shoulder strap could get caught on your, on your cable and you don't wanna end up damaging the audio port in your camera but omitting the cable would mean that it's even simpler and even better as a run and gun vlog style microphone. All right, Rode Video Micro 2, the microphone of the people, the most budget friendly microphone we've got on the list. Two feet away, vlog style, nice little microphone, Rode Video Mic 2, second generation, not the first, second like I was saying. Two feet away, how does this sound? Rode Video Micro 2, five feet away, almost forgot. That's how it goes here in the content creation world. Rode Video Micro 2, five feet away. I think the two, my, my brain saw two, and I got all screwed up. Anyway, and I forgot to zoom my lens, so it actually looks, I think we're at 20 millimeters. So how does it sound? Five feet away. Rode Video Micro 2, 10 feet away. Untreated room, untreated, un, un, unsound treated room. Echoes all over the place. You can probably hear it's picking up a lot of echoes. So, budget option, microphone of the people. Rode Video Micro 2. Now, same thing with the Rode Video Mic NTG. The Rode Video Micro 2 does allow you to actually boom it closer to your mouth right here. So again, I'm six feet away from the camera, got my boom pole, got my cheap wire extender, and I got the microphone right here so I can get right up close to the microphone. Only thing with this microphone is I can't adjust my audio levels here. I have to get up and go by the camera and actually adjust the audio levels like that. Now last but certainly not least, we're going to talk about the Sennheiser XS Lav mic with the USB-C connector on the end of it. Now, I bought this microphone to primarily be used with my iPhone 15 Pro, which has that nice USB-C connection on the back. And I gotta say the microphone is actually really good. All you do is connect it right there, connect this to your shirt, and now there you go. You've got awesome audio, just a wire, pretty cool and something that a lot of people don't use anymore. We're all on these wireless microphones nowadays. Now as a bonus, this microphone also works with the DJI Pocket 3 and it also works with the Action 4. Pros of this microphone. It is actually a little bit cheaper than the Rode Video Micro 2. I know I said this was the cheapest microphone, but this one's kind of in a league of its own. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Pretty cheap, $60. You get a nice high quality lav mic that connects right up to your phone. Pretty good. And speaking of connecting up to your phone, it also works with other USB-C devices. This one can connect right up to my DJI Action 4, or if you're using the DJI Pocket 3, and you don't wanna use the wireless option, but you want better audio closer to your mouth, you can just connect it right up. It connects in a matter of seconds. Boom, you're good to go. Sound, sounds absolutely great, especially in an outdoor environment. All you gotta do is clip it to your shirt, plug it into your phone, hit record, start talking, you're good to go. And you could see very busy intersection in the middle of rush hour, just using the phone with the lab mic, cars beeping over there, a lot of people around. This is how it sounds. So you jam this thing in your pocket for $60, pull out your phone, film in public, or film in a noisy environment. That thing's making a lot of noise, that food truck. This is what you get. It's also a lot simpler than the wireless option since there are no cables. Literally just get it, put it in your pocket and go. And speaking of putting it in your pocket and going, it's super lightweight and super compact. You can roll it up, throw it in your pocket next to your phone. It's gonna take up virtually no extra space. So if you like to go super lightweight, or you just wanna go out for a quick lunch break, you don't wanna bring a backpack, you don't wanna bring all this extra camera equipment, you wanna do a couple of casual outdoor filming, a couple of casual vlogs, because that's what vlogs should be anyway. The phone like this and a microphone like this 
Throw these in your pocket, you're good to go to get amazing audio in your vlogs. Cons of this microphone. We touched on this a little bit, but this only works with those smaller action cameras or the Pocket 3. It does not work with a camera like the A7S III or the Sony ZV-E1. These require an actual audio port, a 3.5 millimeter audio port, audio, audio wire to actually work. So this microphone, it's really only for your phones and your mobile devices. Now, while it is great that it's a wire and you don't have to worry about any batteries, that does mean you're gonna have to make sure that you untangle it if it gets all tangled like it is right here, especially if you're jamming it in your pockets. Now, for me, it's not enough of an issue or enough of a pain for me to just ditch this mic and use a wireless system altogether, but that is something that a lot of people don't like. When I went from the wired Apple headphones to the AirPods, that's something I immediately noticed. It was so nice to not have to untangle them all the time. So it is something to consider. And speaking of that, if you look on Amazon, you could actually find some cheaper audio options that connect up to your phone, your Pocket 3, your Action 4, for not a whole lot more. I think the Hollyland system goes for just about $120. So yes, it is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but nowhere near the ECM mics, nowhere near the Rode Video NTG, and nowhere near that DJI Mic 2 system for $350 we were talking about earlier in this video. So those are all the microphones that we're gonna talk about today. I've gotta to get this into Final Cut Pro and actually listen to them, and then I will come back with a conclusion for you. Okay, it is now a couple of days later. After editing all of that footage, listening to all of the audio from all the microphones tested, here is my overall opinion on all of them. Let's start off with the Rode Video Mic NTG. This is the microphone that I'm actually using right now. And I've just got it connected to a boom pole, so it's right close to my mouth. And I've got it wired up to the camera, which is just pretty much arm's length away. The Rode Video Mic NTG is the best sounding, most versatile shotgun microphone that we've discussed in this video. It is a much better value than the Sony ECM shotgun microphones since you can use it with just about any device and you can mount it on a boom pole like I'm doing right now to keep the microphone closer to you or closer to your talent or your subject that you're filming. So who should go out and buy this microphone? Well, working professionals, this is definitely gonna be a popular option or it has been a popular option. Content creators like yours truly over here that really want the best sounding audio they can get from their equipment and individuals that don't mind spending a little bit more to get an amazing sound from a shotgun microphone. Now, since this microphone is the biggest and heaviest microphone on the list today, it's really gonna work best in professional environments, controlled environments where you don't need the most portable gear and most of your camera and audio equipment are locked off on tripods. You have a whole bunch of space. Now, of course you can use it outside as a running gun logging microphone phone, but it's just a bit big and bulky for a lot of people. So if you really want the best audio for your outdoor vlogs, you could definitely do it, but there might be some better options. Next on the list, the DJI Mic 2 wireless microphone. This is the most versatile microphone on the list today. And the reason for that is since it's a wireless system, you're gonna mount the transmitter, mount the microphones on your shirt, on the inside of your shirt, or put this in your pocket and wire up the lab mic underneath your shirt. That way the microphone is always less than a few inches from your mouth. And it means that wherever you go, however near or far you are from the camera, you're gonna get consistent, clear audio. Now, who is this microphone for? Well, just about anyone that has the budget to buy this system can benefit from this microphone. Now that includes working professionals, content creators, podcasters, interviewers, literally anyone that is creating videos and needs good audio can benefit from this microphone. It is extremely intuitive to use with this AirPod style charging case. They've got the adapters to plug into your phone. They've got Bluetooth connectivity so it can work with any camera, not just Sony. It can work with your phones. It can work with your DJI Pocket 3s, your DJI Action 4, your Action 5, and you could even connect it up to your laptop or literally any device you've got it. And while at $350 for the entire kit you're seeing right here, it is very expensive, more than the NTG. However, you can buy it as a watered down kit with just one transmitter and one receiver, and it still comes with a cable and a couple of the accessories to plug into your phone. At last I checked on Amazon, the price for that configuration, $220, a lot easier to swallow if you're on a tighter budget. All right, next on the list, the Sony ECM-B1M. 
Now, I used to love this microphone. I used to use it every single day. It was great when I was creating daily content about a year ago, but honestly, I'm kind of over it at this point. It is much more expensive than the Rode Video Mic NTG while not sounding quite as good, and it is the exact same price as the DJI Mic 2 system, but you lose out on a whole lot of versatility. So who is this microphone for? If you want a shotgun microphone that doesn't require batteries or cables like the NTG, but you still wanna have a good sounding one, I'll admit this one does sound very good for what it is. Not to mention it's better for running gun filming or outdoor vlogging, since the lack of cables and lack of batteries means you can just connect it up, start recording, and you're good to go. Now, like I said, I used to use this microphone every single day when I was creating daily content, it was great, but I have since moved on. It pretty much just sits in the drawer right now. So I can't recommend this since the price is 350. You can probably pick it up used for under 300, closer to 250. I'd still rather go with a microphone that is a lot more versatile and sounds better than something that is so restrictive like the ecm one m And speaking of better microphones for running and gunning filming, the microphone that I can recommend over the B1M is the ecm B. 10. Now the B10 has all the negatives as the bigger B1M, but they don't hit quite as bad just because this one is a solid $100 cheaper. List price for this one is $250, while list price for the B1M is going to be $350. It's also much smaller and lighter than the NTG, and it has a far better shock mount than the B1M, meaning it's going to be a better option for running and gunning filming and outdoor vlogging. This microphone doesn't sound quite as good as the ECM B1M, but honestly, it's probably a about a 7% difference, 7% worse than the ECM B1M, but you're saving at least $100, you're getting just a better, smaller overall product, and you really have to be listening to both of the microphones, the ECM B10 and the B1M that is, back to back to even start to hear that they sound a little bit different. Next up, Rode Video Micro 2. Now this microphone is the best value microphone on the list, hands down. Yes, it doesn't sound as good or have the USB-C port versatility as the Rode NTG, but it's small, lightweight, doesn't require batteries, and for $80, just $80, this one sounds amazing. Now the ECM B10 does sound a little bit better than the Rode Video Micro 2, but again, $200 used, $80 new, that means you can buy two Rode Video Micros and still have money left over than if you went out and got the ECM B10. So if you're on a super tight budget, just get the Video Micro 2, call it a day, don't worry about anything else. This is gonna be able to do everything you're gonna need it to do. And if you already have some nicer microphones, some more expensive microphones, I'd still recommend this just because it's so small and lightweight, you can throw it into your camera bag as a backup microphone, or you can connect it to any camera, not just Sony cameras, and it's going to be a great vlogging on the go microphone since it's gonna give you such good sound while still being so small, lightweight, and cheap. Next on the list, the Sennheiser XS Lav Mic USB-C. Now, if you want a microphone that works with your iPhone 15 or 16 Android devices, DJI Pocket 3 or DJI Action 4 or Action 5, this microphone is the ticket. It has a USB-C connector right at the end, so you don't have to worry about using a 3.5 millimeter jack to USB-C adapter. It's also smaller, lighter, and cheaper than the DJI Mic 2. This microphone doesn't require batteries. Literally just plug and play, and you're gonna have great audio. It's also a very malleable microphone. You can crumple it up really small so that it doesn't take much more space than a set of keys would in your pocket. So if you want something that's small, lightweight, simple, just connect it up to your phone when you're out there doing your casual vlogs, that's where this microphone is really going to shine. And at $60, it's still a lot cheaper than any other microphones on this list, even the Rode Video Micro 2. In conclusion, the best microphone on this list, the Rode Video Mic NTG, the one you've been listening to for this entire segment. Now, the best microphone that is most versatile on today's list is the DJI Mic 2 wireless microphone system. Best value option, Rode Video Micro 2 hands down. The best microphone for filming on your phone and keeping your setup simple, the Sennheiser XS Lav Mic. No batteries, 
cheap and sounds very good. Sony ECM mics. I can no longer recommend the ECM B1M for its price and lack of versatility. It is no longer worth it to spend 350 on one of these brand new. Now I can recommend you try to buy a used ECM B10, which is a smaller version of the ECM B1M. If you do want a shotgun microphone that doesn't require any cables or batteries to operate. But even then it's still a pretty hard sell since if you buy one of these used for 200, you can still go out and buy two Rode Video Micro 2s and have money left over for some other accessories. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.